Well, David Flint is the national convener for uh, Australians for a constitutional monarchy and he joins me now from Sydney. Professor Flint, thanks very much for your time today. Are you surprised you. at the reaction to the Prime Minister's decision yesterday? Well, it was a gracious gesture. I'm surprised by a lot of the comment, particularly the uninformed comment. You'd think that people might have checked on the relationship and the support which the Duke has given over his life to our country particularly when he was a young Greek sailor and he was risking his life voluntarily to defend Australians. There he was on convoys protecting Australian soldiers going to the Middle East. There he was with Australians at the Battle of Crete and other battles in the Mediterranean. There he was based in the Pacific Fleet uh, spending a lot of time in Australian ports and there in Tokyo Bay at the time of the Japanese surrender when a man voluntarily puts his life up to help our soldiers and sailors that's something that people ought to be informed of before they go off on these criticisms which are just unjustified the man who's spent but his whole life... But thousands of Australians fought to defend this country many many died in the trenches and they haven't been given uh, knighthoods or, or other awards like this? I'm not saying that was the basis mm. of his knighthood, but he has this very long connection with the country. He served us as a consort of the Queen of our country and the head of the Commonwealth, done whatever we wanted him to do, and those have not been onerous services, but they have been services. For example, in 1956, at our request, not because he asked for it, at our request, because the Queen was with her young children, he opened the 1956 Olympics. He, he has continued to serve. He doesn't get paid for that. And he's not, as uh, someone erroneously said on one of the television stations, that he's paid by the British government. He's not paid by the British government. But he... He's not short of a buck, though. Oh, no, no, he's <laughs> his, not. His, li his lifestyle. No, no, but uh, oh, he, leaves a, he lives a reasonably abstemious lifestyle, a personal lifestyle, but he gets no, and he expects no, golden handshake. There's no pot of superannuation, there are no consultancies, and yet he's being criticised as though he has no relationship with the country. Perhaps it might have been done on a different day, but it was a nice gesture. It's not the first time that we've given awards in the Orders of Australia to people who don't live in the country. We've given it to foreign citizens, and. Uh, and uh, appropriately so. That's what you do with your words. There are plenty of critics of this who themselves have foreign knighthoods, uh, knighthoods from foreign republics, from foreign monarchies and from the papacy and there's nothing wrong with that and it's, it's a normal part of international life that you give your awards. So uh, the fact though that this is the highest honour that can be bestowed uh, and the fact that, well, he, he's not Australian. Tony Abbott said he would award it to Australians. Uh, but also, in terms of the reaction, not just from, uh, you know, the, the traditional opponents of the monarchy or traditional opponents of the coalition, but those within the coalition and some of the monarchists as well, does this controversy have the potential to demean the very meaning and, and uh, intent of these awards? Well, perhaps for a day or so, it'll be something which will be forgotten by next week. It's not a, a major event. I think it's been overblown very much. Perhaps it could have been on, done on a different day, but it was the Prime Minister's call. I'm surprised that uh, some members of his own party and, uh, according to the news, his own cabinet, are uh, getting irritated by this when it's um, a matter of the Prime Minister. There's, a, there's no reason to panic over this. I can't see why this should be such a matter of such great concern. We've seen much more serious problems in the parliament. We've seen, we've seen the previous government supporting a man who quite clearly had used his credit card to steal money from members of his union when he was a unionist mm. it, it, it and spent it on the, brothels. It has the potential though to, to set back the monarchist cause, doesn't it? Because uh, the Republican movement say they expect a big boost to their membership, for example, <laughs> as a result of this. They always say that. They always come out with big boosts in their membership. But uh, 
it's very clear if you look at the polls that support has been falling since the landslide, landslide defeat in 1999. And more significantly, support has been falling not only among the old, but uh, now the young are bigger opponents or not supporters of a politician's republic than the elderly. Mm. Professor David Flint, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.